In this video, we'll talk about the architecture of Crystal Reports for Visual Studio.net. And just to let you know that this is a, a PowerPoint presentation primarily, however, there will be elements of Visual Studio included in here. Let's get at the heart of what Crystal Reports for Visual Studio.net is. I mean, what is it really? Uh, ultimately, it's about four things. It's a set of tightly integrated add-ins, toolbars, and designers that fit into Visual Studio.net. The Crystal Reports team worked closely with Visual Studio developers as they were uh, designing this in Redmond. Then there's also an element of the old Crystal Reports 8.0, the COM-based engine. I anticipate in further releases that it'll be converted over to 100% managed code, but for right now there's some interop that happens. And as you see the next point, there's a .NET wrapper th around the COM-based engine, which we know as the um, Crystal Decisions .Crystal Reports Engine namespace. And whenever we're developing using the report document, we basically have uh, access to this .NET wrapper. And then finally, it's uh, a series of .NET components that know how to display the reports. There is a Windows and a web-based viewer. So let's take a look at the architecture of the components that are involved with uh, Crystal Reports or Visual Studio.net. First of all, like we said, at its core, there's the CRPE32, which is the COM-based engine. This is really the brains of the operation. It knows how to integrate the database results. It knows how to generate the RPT files, charting, exporting. Everything that is fundamental to Crystal Reports happens on the COM-based engine. And therefore, to be used in .NET, they need to develop a wrapper, which is the next part. It's the Crystal Decisions .crystal Reports Engine assembly uh, namespace. And when you develop your applications, you have access to this namespace using the report document object. So when you re add a new report document to your application, you grab it from the toolbar and drag and drop it onto the designer surface, whether it's the web-based or the Windows uh, base form designer uh, it does a couple of things at that point as we'll see in a moment I'll, I'll demonstrate this but essentially what it does is it gives you the ability to access the engine so that you can change anything you want to about the report itself and I think that this is a good point uh, part to make this point that there's a fundamental difference between the report and the viewers and you use a different set of objects and namespaces to manage the report and change everything you want to about the report and then there's a different set of objects and namespaces that handle the uh, display of that report and the navigation through that report and we'll make that point again in just a few moments the crystal decisions dot crystal reports dot report source uh, namespace is something that you won't deal with directly but basically it manages the the communication between uh, the viewers and the report engine and so this allows you to have the viewers on a separate machine than the actual report report engine uh, allowing for things like the uh, the we web services or fat client applications where you have a uh, Windows form application sitting on a client's desktop that's able to access the reports off of a main server. And then finally you have the uh, the viewers. They know how to interpret the actual compiled report that's in a specialized format called EPF and they know how to render that correctly for their given venue whether it's a Windows form application or for the web. And we'll talk about the object model of these uh, these viewers in just a moment. And then there's actually one other uh, namespace, the Crystal Decisions .crystal Reports .shared namespace, and it has uh, interface definitions and helper functions and things that will be used by uh, both uh, the engine and the viewers themselves. So we talked a couple times already about the report document object and how important that was because it gives you the access point into the engine namespace. So what's happening behind the scenes whenever you create a report and then add a report document object onto your designer surface? So what I've done is I've taken the liberty of just creating a quick little application, a test bed for all my development. and um, 
what I've got here is a report that I created called Cursor Report 3. And it's just a simple report uh, that I developed using the, uh, the experts. And I want you to notice the first thing that happens whenever you create a report. There's actually a code behind for that report. You could even drill down further and see that it has a resource file. If you were to double click this report uh, 3.vb, you'd see kind of a designer surface and when you switch to the code view you can actually see what's going on behind the scenes. Cursor Reports is creating a public class that allows you to access certain properties uh, for example it, it sets the resource name to the name of the report and then it also has something interesting read-only properties for each of the sections that you defined within the report. So when you see a, a section over here in the report, let's say like for example the report header section 1, um, the code behind gives you the ability to get to section 1 by making it a read-only property. And so this is what it, it means by creating strongly typed reports. Reports that you're able to reference the various objects on the report by their name not by uh, using kind of the nomenclature that they have here. This is very similar to strongly typed data sets in the ADO.NET world where you can access the tables by name and the fields by name instead of having to use you know tables um, sub-zero dot uh, uh, field or column um, sub 3 and so I'll show you how that plays in in just a moment but let's go to close all this down and go to our just regular form designer when I go to my toolbox go to components and plop a report document object onto the designer surface it pops up this little message box and asks, asks us whether we want to use a typed or untyped class for the basis of this report document. And so it shows us a list of all of our typed, or rather, rather strongly typed uh, reports, or we can select an untyped report document. So I'm just going to select Crystal Report 3, since that's the one we were looking at, and select OK. So notice that it puts an instance of the Crystal Report 3 onto our designer surface. So if I were to go into my form load and take a look at some of the hidden designer code, we can scroll down and take a look at the, um, the initialized component private sub where all the settings are made on the objects that are contained by the form and we can take a look at this first line me dot crystal report 3 1 equals a new instance of sales report dot crystal report 3 there is our strongly typed report as an instance of this so that now whenever you refer to crystal report 3 1 such as here you can set the print options and we can also get a reference to it here so if we go um, crystal report 31 dot now we can see all of the properties and methods that we get access to and I'll show you what it means to have a strongly typed report as we scroll down you can see that we have our sections so I'm gonna go ahead and type in section 1 dot and now I can retrieve the name or the format and set all of this information at runtime from within my code. So you can see here that uh, the Crystal Reports for Visual Studio Net is pretty extensible. In fact you could develop an entire report um, from scratch at runtime based on the user's uh, input. You'd have to have pretty intimate knowledge of the entire object model of the, uh, the engine namespace, but it's definitely possible. 
So back to our original question, what happens when you drag the report document object onto your designer surface? Well, it creates an instance of the strongly typed report. And by strongly typed, again, we mean that the report file and the code behind already exist and that there's public methods that are properties that allow you to access the various sections of the report and allow you to modify them as needed. And so from a practical standpoint, you can change just about any aspect of the, uh, the report on the fly. So the documentation within uh, visualstudio.net is pretty helpful, but I found another very good reference for uh, a visual object model for CRISPR reports. And I found that at this location, if you take a look at it, um, at the very end of the document in an appendix, it shows you, let's scroll up here, a, uh, an object model for the report document. We can scroll in and, and take a look where you can get access to um, a, a set of tables that are referenced within the report document. Uh, you can obviously access uh, any of the information about print options, about the report's actual definition, the areas, the sections, and other reporting objects. Um, formula fields, group names, parameter fields, everything that you need to access. You can you can do this from the report document. And so I'd refer you to this as a pretty useful resource if you're going to do a lot of work with Crystal Reports and actually using the, uh, the report document object. But remember that the report document object is really only half of the equation. The report document object allows you to work with the report and modify it. But then there's the other side of it, which is the actual viewer objects. And so with the viewer objects, uh, when you're in code, you're able to actually uh, use them to set the presentation details, the, the look, the feel, the size. Um, probably one of the more significant things that you can do is actually capture and handle events that are raised from uh, the viewer objects. And again, I'll pop back over to this uh, object model reference, because you can also view the, um, the Windows and Web Forms viewer object model and take a look at all the events that you can capture and handle. So you can have your own set of buttons or set of images that allow you to uh, drill, drill into a sub-report, um, to uh, navigate, to search, to refresh the report, or to zoom into the report. So you don't have to accept the default look of Crystal Reports. You can customize it and make it look any way you want to using this object model. And you also use the, uh, the viewer object to set secure database login information. I'll have a video about that in the future so that you can request credentials from the end user to make sure that he or she has access to view that information. And then also you can prompt the user or hard code any parameters that are required by the report and pass those along as a request to the engine so that it can render the report properly. And again, for more information about the viewer object and the report document object, I'd refer you to that PDF file. One other quick note, uh, this document and several places in documentation will say don't mix object models. Uh, there is uh, some overlap and functionality between the viewer objects and the report document that allows you to modify various aspects of the report. Uh, they suggest that you choose to either do that in one or the other, but don't modify some of the properties of the report in the viewer objects and then some of the properties using the report document. They never exactly spell out why. I haven't tried it myself, but uh, that might be sound advice if there's some sequence of events where these things need to happen in a certain order that might uh, be a problem. So just wanted to add that and hope you enjoyed this video about the architecture. Thank you.